Hello, friends, and welcome to our first official episode of the Overwatch podcast. Is that a cool acronym? My name is Lavender Phobic. I have my good friend here, Steel. How's it going, so hello. And this will be our, as I just said, our first episode. We are going to answer some obligatory questions about how we met, how we know each other, and just stuff about ourselves so we can get fully into it next episode. Yeah, as y'all know, I asked y'all on Instagram at Steel Skull 404 a couple questions about starting the new podcast, and we had over 86 responses, all being unique. Some of them were mixtures of the two and everything in between. So we are going to answer that, though, but first we're going to start off on pretty much how we met. So uh, you want to take over for that, Lab? Yeah, I can take over for that. So I'll make it dramatic. Ready? Go the year it. is 2020. We are in the midst of a huge wide world epidemic called COVID-19, which was awful. We all hated it. <laughs> but as somebody, I have played Overwatch since it came out. So when I got my Nintendo Switch, I did play on the Switch. It was awful. It was but awful. But it was <laughs> Um, I got it on my Switch and I started playing on my Switch. And then I just ended up meeting a bunch of people because I used to join those like when Overwatch 1 had the, you can, oh, here, join a team. Join a group. Oh, yeah, join I joined team, one of those. Yeah, team lobbies. Team lobbies. Oh, yeah, those. Um, so I joined one of those, and then I met him. This is my homie. Yeah. OG homie. Yeah, it was really funny, though. And then like, he just... I think I joined your group, actually. I think I joined with you and your sister when uh, y'all were looking for teammates. Then I just... You joined, did. You I did do I that. I just joined in. You did, yeah. And then ever since though, we just like played every single day though. We talked on the daily. It was like even outside of Overwatch, we would just talk about what whatever. Yeah, we were we were like friends, but then um just kind of nowhere. We just kinda dropped off. We stopped talking, which it wasn't because of anything negative. No, we didn't have like we didn't we never had a fight or anything. We didn't really argue no, 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 about no, no. anything though. Like the only time we ever it's argued so was like in Overwatch. But besides that though, it's like we were just super busy. Like, I had work, yeah. you also had work, we just, like, yeah. it just didn't, like, the timing just didn't work. It didn't. But, I mean, after we recently, because Overwatch 2 came out a while ago, we started playing again, and we recently got back in touch and decided to start a podcast. Well, yeah, well, that, and I also saw you back on my timeline on Instagram. That's the thing, though. I was like, wait, who's Lavender oh, yeah, Like, true. that sounded so familiar. Because I remember I followed you when we first met. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Catching, like, catching up, like, see what you're doing, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, wait, who's this Lavender Phobic? Because you haven't posted, like, since we met. So I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, I don't know who this person is. Do I unfollow them? Then I look through my Discord friends. I was like, wait, Lavender Phobic. I'm like, let me look through my messages. And I just see, like, oh, yeah, we played on the daily. Like, we played Overwatch yeah. on the daily. So Every day. So It was crazy. Kinda, just... It really just worked out in the end. It did. But now it's like four years later, though, we're starting a podcast. We're really just like catching up again, like cracking jokes yeah. and pretty much doing the same old shit like it was four years ago. Exactly. Nothing really changed. I mean, obviously, we're still learning more about each other within the last four years, but we're still just as good friends as we were. Exactly. It's like I have a lot of shit to say on the podcast, though. It's like, so y'all definitely have to be looking out for these episodes that are coming up, though, because pretty much how I want to schedule it, though, but we're going to talk about Overwatch one week, see what the patch notes is or anything new in the community, though. And then next then the week after that, though, will probably be more personal, personal stuff about me and Lavender. Yeah, we want to go back and forth because we don't want this to be like 100 percent like, a, oh, this is our life podcast. We want to work in Overwatch because that was what our base was. We wanted to base it on Overwatch and the patch notes and what's going on in the community and new skins and stuff that was scrapped. Yeah, it's like some days like and, it'll be a dead day. Like some day it'll be like a dead week. Who knows? We may not be able to talk about Overwatch because there's like nothing new going on in Overwatch. So that will be those will be the weeks where we just talk about ourselves or like what's going on in our lives and like something new that we figure out about ourselves, like shit like that. Yeah. So it's but, gonna be yeah. really super duper exciting. So yeah, oh, without further ado, Lev, I asked, I, like I said, though, I'm on Instagram, at skull 404 We got a whole bitch ton of questions. So the first question is, I yeah. really like, was, how did you get your name? This goes for both of us, so yeah. Yeah, do you mean to go first? Uh, yeah, go for it. So, my name originally came from, <clears throat> I was a, I was, I, I am a cosplayer, um, but my cosplay name was Lavender Pho, but Lavender Honey, I believe it, Honey Lavender. I um, think it was like it was either Lavender Honey or Honey Lavender, because I remember that, like your old ass yeah. name. It was one of those, but I mean, it just kind of stuck. Um, 
I just, I've always loved the lavender, the scent, the smell, and everything like that about it. So it kind of just did that. But everybody started calling me Lav, and then um, I came out as non-binary, and it, it just became my name. So it just, everybody thought it worked with me, and it worked well, and I, I love it. I love my name. I think it's perfect. Yeah, it's really great. So I don't think I told you my origin story, how I got my name. No, I don't so, think you have. So, okay, so what I, I can, like... I can say, like, the five different origin stories that, like, I came up with, but, like, this is, like, the actual tr- tongue and truth one. So I, as most people know, though, I used to go by the Steel Skull Kid when I was, like, remember that. it's, like, bro, I was, like, probably, like, 12 when I first came up with this name, though, because Skull Kid <laughs> was one of the enemies in Majora's Mask from the Legend of Zelda series, by far best Legend of Zelda game of all time, though, and Steel is just toughest metal, like, nothing breaks steel. So I was, like, oh, that's gonna sound badass, Steel Skull Kid. So I'm gonna call myself that. So, doing my Steel Skull Kid ever since I was 12, I turned 18, and I started making videos on YouTube under Steel Skull Kid. I, as most people know, though, my old, old, old Super Smash Bros. videos, I still went by Steel Skull Kid. So, when I turned 18, um, all my family and friends were like, when did you become Steel Skull Man? When did you become Steel Skull, like, adult? Like, shit like that, they just making fun of me. So, I was like, fuck this. I don't need any of this shit. And I'm already doing cybersecurity and shit like that, though. I'm working with computers. And 404 is the like error code. When something like, goes wrong in a web page, it will say like, "Oh yeah, error 404." And I was like, "Oh shit, that's a badass number." I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that. He's saying he's own. emo, guys. He's saying he's emo. I'm not emo. <laughs> it's like I just see myself as an error because <laughs> like when I post videos, like I just don't care what people think. I post for myself. Like I don't post to make other people happy. I don't post to make my fans happy. I post because I make myself happy. Which is like so different in the YouTube scene. Like everyone wants to get like the most views. Everyone wants to get like famous one day. They don't do it for themselves. They only want to see like what gets the most clicks. Me, I'm just like I don't give a fuck. I'm doing whatever I want to. So exactly. And it's like I speak my mind. I'm very open to what I say. I'm very open with my religion, politics, all the different jazz though. But like I don't disrespect anybody who has different uh, viewpoints from I do. If anything, I respect it more because like I'm getting educated. Not a lot of people are willing to get educated on different topics. So that's why I see myself as an error of 404. So uh, ever since I was 18, Steel Skull 404 just stuck with me. And most people just call me Steel nowadays, even outside of YouTube. My personal friends call me Steel still. Yeah. So yeah, like that's pretty much my origin story on how I got my name. So yeah, big fun. So uh, <laughs> let's go to the next question, though. This one I actually really <laughs> like a lot, though. It's like, where did you grow up and how did it affect you? All right. Do you want to go first? Or you want to go first? Uh, I'll go first this time. So, as everyone knows, I am the Prince of Houston, Texas. The reason I call myself that because I was actually born and raised in Harris County, Houston, Texas, which is right next to downtown. If people don't know, I grew up with a really big family. My uh, dad's side of my family grew uh, was born in El Salvador, who migrated to the United States and just settled in Houston and. Pretty much, like <laughs> like twenty three years later, I prop out from my mom and dad, who are high school sweethearts. So, like, that happened, and pretty much grew up with a big, loving family. Everyone supported me, no matter what I did, because I used to do, like, I used to write music, used to write books, did dance for a little bit, did theater, and they all supported me every which way, though. So, it's really affected me a lot, though, being that close to my family and having all this support on my back, though. They literally said, no matter what you do, we'll support you. It's like, chase your dreams. No one can hold you down but yourself. So, just roll with it. So, just having... Uh, my family with me in Houston really made a lot for me and really helped me grow as a person. And yeah. That's very, I'm very happy for you. Um, I actually came from the complete opposite of that. Um, I grew up in a very, very, very broken home. I was a very, <laughs> I feel like a lost child most of the time. Um, my parents hated each other. I'm sure we'll get more into my lore and my depth later on. It'll be a separate episode. Yeah, not the first episode, but um, I just, I've been, I've been on my own since I was, uh, well, I was four pretty much. So I've learned to be my own person and to, if nobody's going to help me, I have to help myself. I have to be myself, be my own independent person. Um, and that has shaped me so much. I had my grandparents who were my saving graces. They were my rock and I love them so much. But it's just 
they taught me that if nobody else is going to help you, you have to help yourself. So it really, it shaped me as a person to be, as I said, independent, to go forth with my own life, my own dreams, to work hard for what I do. Um, and it was just, that's how I've been doing it. I've been going on my own terms. I do what I want, when I want, in a good way, though, not like a mean way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but much like my good friend Steele, I also grew up doing theater. Um, I was in choir for 10 years. I am professionally chorally trained. So Same here. You can see all my music in my SoundCloud. Link down in the description below. Check out my music. I just released a new track called Mio Malkova. It's me sp- singing cool in thing. Spanish. It's me speaking in Spanish. Shout out Rizzo Mio Mokova. Please, we want you on the podcast. Please. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> I know you only go for white guys, but I'm Hispanic, so give me a chance, please. I lie. I lie. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So I just grew up like that, and then was on my own for pretty much, and then I met my amazing, wonderful, significant other, who has helped me be my own person even more. I've grown to be actually myself and not what other people want me to be. That's what's so, up. That's what's up. That's that's what it is. I'm very, very happy now. Nice. Well, uh, going from a darker moment, we're going to a little bit funnier moment. What is your <laughs> favorite funny story to tell people? Oh, oh my God. You got to go first. I got to think. I don't even know. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is my funniest story uh, that I have. It was with me and my best friend, Adam, uh, who you might know as Zacharias. We might have him on the podcast later this week if he's available because he's currently in Nigeria visiting his dad. But by far, one of our favorite stories to tell each other that always gets us to fucking laugh is so me and him were playing basketball because we play basketball every Saturday. Uh, Just like either pick up basketball, rec center, whatever, but always playing basketball. So the funniest story I could give, though, was Adam was trying to defend me. I'm trying to shoot a three-pointer. Bro jumps up in the air, twists his ankle, and said the monkey fell off the bed. Uh, Adam is, of course, black. So like he made the joke, and I was dying of laughter because literally he was like, because, like, you know, everyone knows that song, No More Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. It's like everyone knows that song. Of course. So, like, when he said that, I shot the ball, missed it, and I cried of laughter. I literally lost the game because I didn't know he took the ball and shot his winning three-pointer. So I was just dying of laughter. And every time I tell my friends this story, they're always like, bro, that's OD. That's so fucking funny. Because, like, (laughs) it's like you don't expect someone to say that in a pickup game of basketball. Yeah. But yeah, all right, I'll roll it back over to you. Oh my god. Um. So this, I guess, this is the funny story I can think of right now. <laughs> um. Oh wait, I don't know which one to tell. One or two. Two. Okay, so I was at work the other day. I am well, not anymore, but I was a barista. I am was a full time barista. I was very good at my job. I am very good at my job. I still have two weeks left. Um. <laughs> But there was one time that it was me and my best friend who works. Her name's Kyla. She's awesome. I love her dearly. Um, But a bug, like a big palmetto bug, got into the shop. And when I say me and her grabbed each other and screamed so loud. (laughs) Because we both hate, like we both hate cockroaches. They make us sick. So literally... (laughs) When I tell you I grabbed her and threw her across the <laughs> shop to get us away from it, it was insane, dude. We both were freaking, like, screaming, crying, because we do not like bugs. Well, I like bugs. I just don't like cockroaches. It was awful. Oh, my God. It was so scary. And we were literally holding each other in the back room, like, crying, because we did not want to be near this bug. <laughs> And then our co-worker, Summer, who's also amazing, she kept coming behind us and, like, tickling our back and being like, oh, the bugs are running, even freaking us out. It was awful. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so scary. Oh, my gosh. That's too funny. I can just see you, like, a bit, like, just pushing your friend out the way just to get away from a little bug. 
Dude, it wasn't little. It was at least two inches long. <laughs> Awful. So scary. Uh, uh, okay. What is the best compliment you've ever received? Like, that's a really good question. Someone said that I look... Um, I'll show my face eventually on the podcast. Just not right now. I have no makeup on. I woke up at 2.30. Um, that and Lavender doesn't have a camera for her PC yet. I don't. I'm poor, guys. <laughs> um, someone said that I look like... Oh, where's the song? It is a Taylor Swift song, by the way. Taylor Swift is my... I love her dearly, and I will have a little segment on here where I talk about her tour in the podcast, whether Steel likes it or not. That's going to be your lore um, episode. Each one of us has a lore episode. That will be your lore that's episode, true. and that's it. <laughs> Someone said that I look like um, New Romantics, which is one of my favorite songs by her. They're like, oh, yeah, you just look like that. You give those vibes. You're so summery and beautiful and pretty. And I was like, I'm going to pee my pants and kiss you on the mouth. Thank you. Ayo, ayo, what? Ayo, what? (laughs) Ayo, what? I got excited. It was so (laughs) nice. (laughs) Oh, shit. For me, though, I haven't really gotten any compliments. No one's really ever complimented me, like, being dead ass because I'm a guy. So, like, we don't really get compliments. But I think the one I think you're a good Overwatch player. (laughs) <laughs> yeah but you're just you my that. homie for real oh 100 but like i think the one that really stuck with me was the best though was like a girl that like i never really talked to ever in my life like i saw her like maybe once or twice not even and this was in mm-hmm. college this was in, in college never interacted with her once though she was like hey i see you walking around though and i really like you having long hair so like then oh I started, yeah you fucking you love your long hair yeah so i, I really just like grew out my po- like, i really have a ponytail right now i like i love having long hair and i, I think that really like stuck with re- resonated with me though because i never used to like i never could like do anything with my hair Actually, if you look at my older videos like i've always had like a buzz cut and that's pretty much it uh-huh. though so i was like i could never really style my hair so then when COVID hit i grew out my hair cut it grew out my hair cut it but then when, when she said i really like you with long hair i was like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna keep it real i hope you guys find each other one day that'd be a cute little love story <laughs> oh my god all my other friends are messaging me leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> all right okay Ooh, what's your favorite pastime and why my favorite pastime oh my god i love going swimming going to the beach going to the pool being in water playing in the rain that is my favorite thing to do i just i've always felt very connected to water um it's just somewhere that i find so calming and i love ocean creatures and sea creatures and it just i love being in water i don't know i feel like a mermaid it's amazing (laughs) that's so funny though because that's me with sand i love sand oh i hate sand (laughs) i love sand it's like i just want to like bury myself in sand and just chill (laughs) <laughs> but like, I wouldn't say that's my favorite pastime. I think my favorite pastime is actually watching horror movies. I love me some horror movies. It's like no one. You know, can. I love me some horror movies that, too. No, 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 no. Not like not that. Not trivia. I love trivia. No one beats me in trivia. I'm so good at that. Like I'm really the smartest out of my family with trivia. Like with just stupid shit. <laughs> it's like I think that's my favorite pastime. Just learning, just like like stupid like trivia shit. Honestly, real. Oh, this is a fucking baller question coming from what Zacharias. He just texted me this right now because he just saw my message. He was like, okay, what did you want to be when you grew up? Wait, oh, what did you want to be when you were a kid and why? Ooh. Okay. That's a good question. Shit, that is a good question. I'll I let you go first. I've oh, you want me to go first? Yeah, I've gone first twi- like twice now for both the questions. Oh, whatever. Um, I always wanted to be a Broadway performer. I wanted to be on Broadway. I wanted to sing. I wanted to dance and do all that for so long. Um, that dream was crushed, unfortunately. And then it changed to being a geneticist. I wanted to be a geneticist. I wanted to work in labs on cures and working on mutations and stuff like that. That's always something that I've really enjoyed. Um, I'm a science girl. In this all the way. More like Dr. Odirin. Don't even get me started. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've always wanted to be like a scientist of sorts, which I mean, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. So 
it's always something that I think would have been, will be amazing and so far. I want my um, doctorates because with my last name, my it would be such a cool doctor, my last name. It would be so cool. Oh, yeah. I would uh, love it. <laughs> I think for me, though, I wanted to be part of the NBA. Like, I really wanted to be part of the NBA. Like, I love basketball. I've always played basketball. Like, all that different jazz, mm-hmm. though. Then I grew up doing theater. So, like, then doing theater has always been my dream as well, though. But I wouldn't really count that as a kid because I did that in high school. So, I wouldn't really count that as a kid, though. But being part of the NBA was always been my dream. But I can realize I can never be in the NBA because I'm 5'7". I'm not really that tall. He's a short king. I'm not short. That's I'm, what they all say. I'm taller than you. I'm by an inch. Exactly. I'm still taller than you. Whatever, man. <laughs> Good at you. I'm taller than you. Do not call me short king. Okay, this one's directed at primarily you, Lavender, because at least me for Lavender. All right. They were like, "What are your opinions on Steel Skull?" Someone just texted me this right now. Okay. Um. Like they said, honest opinions. Honest opinions. He's one of my very good Overwatch friends. We played Overwatch forever. I think he's a hoot and a half. So I'm getting the southern out here. Who said hoot? Um, hoot and a half. I'm from it's the south too. No one says that. that. No one says that. Whatever, man. No one in Houston um, says hoot. Hoot and a half. That's You're a liar. A, Whatever. That, no, that has to be a Florida thing. Um, my that has true to be a and thing. honest. It's not. Uh, don't dox me. Um. I think he has a very loud and brass but good personality, and he does what he wants when he wants, and I appreciate that. <laughs> that's my truthful and honest opinion. Oh, that's too funny. Do it on me! Do it on me! What's you? your honest opinion about me? Oh, you're fucking hilarious, honestly. Everything you do is oh, just, Everything you, you fucking do I'll is just hilarious, night. no matter what. Like, I remember back in the day, you used to always go live on Instagram, Honestly, I would just cry of laughter. Like, shit yeah, was so I funny. Like... <laughs> Cause, like, I would get off of work so late at night most days where I would just be exhausted. But miraculously, I don't know how you knew from, like, however miles away Houston is from wherever you are. Like, you would just be online right when I got home. So immediately I would just, like, open your, like, Instagram live and just laugh. I'm a yapper, y'all. What can I say? You do have a doctorate in Japanese. That's 100% factual. <laughs> oh my god, it's real. <laughs> oh, this is an easy question. Are y'all an extro- introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. Introvert. 100% both me and him. Yep. We don't like people. It's I just, mean, I'm an uh... ambivert. I'm an ambivert, but I ha- my social battery drains so fast. Oh, yeah, I don't, I can't be out for more than an hour and a half without being like, okay, hey, let's leave, let's go. No, because like, I love going to concerts, like, I love music, I love going to concerts, but I have to be drunk. Me too. I have to be drinking. I have to be drunk. Me this weekend. Oh, 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 leave a like down below and say we want Drunk Mario Party or Drunk <laughs> Mario Kart in chat and we'll play it. Oh, that would be so fun. <laughs> we'll do it. Well, leave it, leave a like and say we want Drunk Mario Kart or Mario Party in chat. We'll do it. We'll do it. Or drunk Overwatch would be so fun. Oh, that would ruin our SR if we did comp. We don't play comp. That's fair. I I don't play comp, and I I don't want to. Oh, I love this question. I love this question. This comes from my friend Amanda. Love you, girl. So funny. She was like, if you could just, if you could, eh, if you had to describe yourself as an animal, which would it be and why? Raccoon. I'm a fucking a raccoon. raccoon. I'm a raccoon, hundred percent. Um, people say I'm, a, I'm very much like a rabbit, like a bunny. People say I'm very bunny coated because you're small. I'm literally a fucking inch shorter than you, and I wear heels often. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> Leave a like down below if you want to see me and <laughs> me and Lad have a boxing <laughs> match. You see, absolutely <laughs> wreck him, kill him dead where he stands. You can kill me. I'm too fast for you. You can catch me. I used to do track and field. I used to do track and field. You cannot beat me in a race. I'm too fast. Good for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my 
my god. Oh, the I podcast love cat is here. He's here. <laughs> the cat. My podcast cat, my sweet baby, <laughs> my sweet cheese. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, if money wasn't a factor, what would you do with your time? Just play Overwatch and stream. Um, if money wasn't a factor, yeah, I would go swimming and go to the beach every day. When you see me in the water, I'd look like a lobster because I'd be so sunburnt. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you pale as a ghost. I'm Irish, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm Hispanic. I got that gas tan 24 7. I'm always sun kissed. I'm always sun kissed, he says. <laughs> oh, I love this question. This is a really personal question. What mm. is your favorite movie, and how does it? Re- and what does it reveal about yourself? Oh my god, I know my answer. Go for it. My favorite movie is the animated film "A Monster in Paris." It has let, the wait, hit no, song. No, let, me guess, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. What is this? Some like Monster High Disney descendant bullshit? Wrong. Really? Yeah, it's about... Oh, I'll read the synopsis and from my mind. Um, <laughs> it is about this... Oh my god. This inventor, Raul, and his good friend, Emil. And they go into this scientist lab. And they accidentally create a monster with a growth serum and a flea from the monkey that's also in the movie. <laughs> but then... Um, there's a girl named who her name is Lucille. She's a popular world or Paris renowned singer who sings the song uh, La Seine et Wah, which is the Seine and I. It is an amazing song. Everybody knows this song. Um, but I mean, it's just that and how the monster falls in love with her, but she feels for him and understands that he is scared because of the big world. It's just, uh, it's so good. And it's just, as much as it's like an old, I think it's 2011 movie, it's just, it's so good. I love it so much. And it, the song is just gorgeous. The soundtrack is beautiful. And honestly, the animation's kind of cute. It's a cute little animation style. <laughs> nice. Nice. I love it so much. All right. Oh, and the Saw franchise. That's my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Okay, so for me, everyone knows by far my favorite movie is The Crow starring Brandon Lee. R.I.P. to R.I.P. to both Brandon Lee and Legend. His wife. Legend. Absolute right. legend. Absolute legend. Absolute legend. Of course, legend. Of Rest course, in peace, please. We love you. Hundred. But anywho. So pretty much though, it's like the pretty much Brandon Lee's character, Eric Draven, dies on his uh, the day before his wedding. And like pretty much a year later he comes back to kill all the guys that pretty much killed his wife as a revenge story. So it was like, damn, like this, like he literally like got resurrected to do like to like set the wrongs right, though. So I really like felt that. And like it really just connected with me, though. The action is so good. The acting is phenomenal. Oh, my and God. It's, like, it it's really the greatest movie of all time. Of course, we'll be both we'll both be reacting to Lavender's movie and my movie sometime on the podcast. So give yes, you honest... want the movie reactions and reviews. Yeah, give it like a full on review to see what's going on with that though. So yeah, leave a like if you're ready for that. Yeah, we're both horror movie like freaks, so we want to watch like new horror movies and like kind of recap them a little bit. Like I know we were talking a little bit about the new Long Legs movie that it's coming out. It looks so cool. That is going to be a good movie. We're both excited to see that. Sure, we live in yeah. different states, though, but we're both planning on seeing it and then talking on the podcast our notes and what we felt about the movie. I'm really excited Agreed. for it, though, so Me have, too. A, and, have a look out for that one. Yeah, and since I live, oh, whatever, I live in Florida, I will be going to Halloween Horror Nights, and I will be going to each house, and I will completely rank them and tell you all the fun details about them and just talking through that. I really want to do that on the podcast because yep. I think that would be so cool. That, it's yep. like an Overwatch horror podcast. <laughs> so it's pretty much like we're just gonna react. Pretty much we're just doing we what we want to do. We will be bringing some Overwatch into it though. 
because that's going to lead to our next set of questions, though, on why we be, why did we both pick Overwatch? And so with me, though, I didn't really pick Overwatch. Like Overwatch kind of picked me because I really grew up like playing Call of Duty, like all the different like first person shooters. But I just love the animation style of the characters with Overwatch, though. So just playing that really resonated with me and made me like love the series. And I haven't mm-hmm. I haven't stopped playing ever since. Yeah, same here. I just. I grew up playing a lot of video games, stuff like that, but I actually was watching a Jacksepticeye video of him playing Overwatch, and it looked so cool, and I just, I played, as I said, I actually played on my cousin's Xbox, not Xbox, PlayStation, when it first <laughs> came out, because I didn't have a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch or anything, so I started playing on that, and I fell in love with it, and I never dropped it, it's always been, like, my favorite thing since it came out, I even have, like, art of the characters, and I have figures and all that, um, and it's just, it's always stuck with me. It's always forever been a hyperfixation. It's just, it's an amazing game, and I've met so many amazing long-term friends yeah, while playing that, like, Steel and my best friend Hannah and Ian. Like, I've made so many friends on this game that I know will be, like, my lifelong friends and who will probably be at my wedding. Like, that's just... Yeah, same with me. It's, it's always it's like, in Overwatch my Overwatch just brings people together. It's honestly insane. It's like it is honestly insane, and I love the. And this is from my point of view as a queer person. It has brought in queer characters in the game. It's so diverse, and it's amazing because you see all these stories and all these people, and you see you get to know the character before you get to know anything else about them, which I think is beautiful. Yeah, it changed the whole landscape of Overwatch. Like, Overwatch literally, like, changed the way we see, like, character introductions now. Yeah, and video games a lot, like, a light. Because it's just, it is such an immersive experience. And I just, huh, it's beautiful. I want to go to BlizzCon one year. I yeah, don't know. It's, it's just great. We, we both love Overwatch. Like, I've always said Overwatch is an abusive relationship that you can't leave. Because, like, it's always, <laughs> like, it's always been there. For, like, you, no, let me cook. Let me cook. Overwatch has always been there for you, though, in your darkest of times. When you're feeling down, you can just play Overwatch and just chill with your friends. When you're feeling alone, you have your friends to chill on on Overwatch that can't be with you IRL. But then other times, though, you just want to, like, drop the game because it's just dog shit on what they're doing to the game. Yeah, some of the nerfs and buffs are making no sense. And it's just sometimes the game is just, you know, and then all the drama with the voice actors and all that kind of jazz and stuff, which we'll talk about eventually. But not for now, because this is our introductory podcast. Yeah, we want, like, we want you all. We want y'all to get to know us, like as people as well. Like we're not just gonna be like that type of creator or that type of podcast channel. Or like we don't like introduce ourselves to y'all. Like we want to like be connected with y'all. We want to answer your questions that you might have. We want to like always post like every Friday, no matter what. Though we could be like hella busy, but we're still gonna try to put out videos every Friday. Like, just to yeah. tell, like, you guys, like, what's going on in our lives or, like, what's going on in Overwatch. Like, pretty much just doesn't matter, like, what we're going to talk about. Like, but it's always going to relate back to, like, what we're doing or what's going on in Overwatch. Yeah. So that was the baseline of what we what We discussed genuinely. We've been discussing this for a while. And we just genuinely were like, this, it's time. We got it. We're going to do it now. Yeah. Because, like, our first idea was just a strictly Overwatch podcast. Like, we talked about this in 2020, in 2020 when we first, like like started talking on the daily where it's like oh yeah that's a great idea we definitely need to do this and then we're just like no we don't want to lean this way we don't want to lean that way what will differentiate differentiate us from other overwatch creators like in the podcast scene it's like how can we like branch out to like talk with you guys being like what do you all want to like listen we also want to make it mellow we want to make it funny like we want like we pretty much want like the podcast to be like you can put on the background have a good laugh while you're doing like homework cooking driving it's like pretty much doing whatever you want yeah, like, doing just mundane stuff. We want to be able to cause a good experience and a good serotonin and dopamine rush just because we upload it. We want to be good creators, not only for you guys, but for ourselves. Exactly. It's like we're going to do things because we want to do it. Like I explained before with how much my name is, I, I do things for myself. I don't do anything for the fans. I don't do this to be famous. I like that's going to be a plus though. I can actually help a lot of people out. If I was famous, like I would donate most of my money, like to help yeah. people like if I was, but I'm not, but that's going to, that's okay. It's like, I'm going to yeah. do what I can and just live my life to the fullest. Cause I know what I do. What I love. Yeah. And we, me and steel have very different 
diverse backgrounds that we want to bring our own experience to you guys. We want you to feel seen and feel heard and understand that there's more people who have had the same experience as you. We want to be there for you guys, but also for ourselves. That's why I'm so excited to start this with him, because he's always been such a great friend with, with me. Yeah, it's like, no matter what, though, like I said, like, really, four years, like, we haven't talked, but I just came out of the blue being like, yo, Lab, what's up? Like, nothing's changed. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> it's like, 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 nothing's changed. Like, I just hit you up, like, when you were doing your uh, physical training thing, when you're doing that, though, I was like, congratulations. Like, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. And, that's and it's what, just, like, it's such an exciting out. experience. Like, that's what we really pretty much want to do, though, because, really, like, I have a very diverse background like rather than lavender because like i always go myself but like i always say like oh yeah i'm the three c's i'm a christian i'm a conservative i'm a cowboy and like those are my main three things that you can refer to me by so like that's yeah. gonna be completely different than lavender's pov which is gonna be like whole different than mine though but yeah like 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 they are non-binary i forget that sometimes though but that's on me so like, yeah I, and like, it's just we yeah. are not gonna completely stop being friends because of he is Christian. He is conservative. I'm not. I'm actually Hellenistic, and I have different ideals and views as him. But that doesn't matter because it's over. This is about an Overwatch podcast. This is about us and Overwatch, not our views yeah. and intakes on the world in a negative sense. You know exactly. Like we can have different POVs. Let's just say the like the old Cassidy voice actor. We could talk about that. Like because I have we my point, I have my point of view. You have your point of view, and we can combine together exactly. to educate people more. Because that's what I like doing. I love being educated about different people's topics. Like, I love it. I hate being blindsided. By this. Exactly. So, and it's plus, so nice to know that everybody has a different opinion. Yeah, but... plus, like, plus, we both did theater. We both can agree. It's hard to be a narrow-minded bigot when you're in theater. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's pretty much almost impossible. Yeah. So, but, like, All right. that's what it is, though. So, like, oh my gosh, like, we were yapping for a while now. <laughs> yeah, let's get back into a few more questions before we end this up. <laughs> yeah, so we still got another, like, 30 more minutes, though. It's probably going to be, like, an hour-long podcast, each one. Yeah. Ooh, how do you want to be remembered? Remembered? I want to be remembered as somebody who cared and helped others. Somebody who was there and was a kind spirit kind of thing. I don't want to be like, oh, they're dead, moving on. I want to be like, oh, we're going to miss them, but we are happy that they had the life that they did. Nice. Yeah. I want to be remembered as the guy that was always willing to always have a smile on his face, though, whether it be like cracking jokes or doing whatever with my friends, though. It's like friends will always be like first with me because like exactly. they with me through thick and thin, like literally. With the Demon Chick, who y'all have met before, on my on when I'm live streaming and when I'm playing videos, like I always Rick Rick roll her every single day, no matter what. <laughs> like I don't give a shit. It could be in the middle of the night though. I'm gonna Rick roll her. I'm gonna send them a couple memes. Be like, Yo, Rick roll, Rick roll, Rick roll. She'll call me a little shit Dude, though. Him I'll the laugh. fucking Rick. Let me tell you. It's like, but like that's the guy I am though. I'm always cracking jokes, no matter what though. So I want to see like when I eventually die, I want my friends or my family to be like, "Yo, he did what he doing love. Like he pretty much did what he loved, just cracking jokes and doing whatever he wanted." I think so, that's beautiful. It's like that was a really good fucking question. Oh, so oh, speaking of which, this this one comes from Seth. What is your biggest Seth? fear? Hi, hey, Seth. My biggest fear: dying alone. Being alone in this world. Damn. Sorry. That was great. <laughs> I was ready for it. Damn. I was ready for it. Damn. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the dark or what's in the dark. I'm afraid that after all I've done in my life that I will be alone. And that's what I don't want. I want to be surrounded by people who I love. Oh, you know damn well you ain't dying without me being by your side. 100%. Because you, know well, you know damn well you dying first. I'm dying first. Shut up. <laughs> I'm younger than you too. I don't even know what you mean. Doesn't matter. You dying first. I ain't dying before you. Hell no. All right, man. I'll put everything in my power. Hell, I'll live through anything. I'll live through anything. I'll be on the deathbed and be like, yo, where's Lavender? Still living in the next room. Can't die yet. <laughs> it's like, like, how's Lavender? Dead. Okay, bye. D. Not lying, no. It's like three minutes after. 
like, oh, damn, guess, guess they're dead. Gotta go. <laughs> Just, like, holding on to life. <laughs> but no, my uh. biggest, my biggest fear... What is it? So like, nah. What uh, is it? My mom was talking to me real fast though, so I had to go on mute. Oh. But anywho. Hi mom. But no, my biggest fear, mutant rats or just rats in general. I am terrified of rats. Like oh, rodents. I love rats. Rodents, they're so cute. rodents freak me the fuck out. Their teeth, their tails, anything like that. So if I were to see one like in my bed or like the one that has a me, like eradicate from Pokemon, if I ever see that shit, hell no, I'm out. <laughs> I love rats and stuff. I think they're so cute. Rat and mice. Hell no. <clears throat> All right, yeah, pretty much all these questions are pretty much like deep rooted answers, though, that we'll probably have to save for next episode because I yeah. have to do a lot of editing for our first video that we did, though. But <laughs> <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this, though. I really had fun, Lavender. Like, we really got to keep going on with this. It's really fun. Yeah, super fun. I'm super excited. It's going to be such a good experience. I've been wanting to start a podcast for years. Honestly, yeah, because we're going to be talking about it for four years and we're finally biting the bullet. Yeah. So yeah, well I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. I really, I know me and Lavender did a hundred percent. No doubt about it. So stay tuned for next Friday when we post. That's going to be all our our opinions on the patch notes because we're going to give it about like a week or two while we test it out, see the new mechanics, yeah. what's going on with it. We don't want to just jump into it week one because it's only been a week since since it came out. Yeah, it's so, definitely something you got to get used to. Uh. Even though some characters like Malga's buff, which we'll talk about, kind of crazy. I don't think he needed it. But oh, we'll yeah. talk about that next episode, so be sure to stay tuned! Yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, Lavender, you're doing the outro. Of course. Thank you guys for watching so much. You guys are amazing. We love you dearly. We cannot wait to see you next time. This is a goodbye from Miss Lavender Phobic and... Steel Skull 404. Alright, we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Deuces, y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed.